I'm a Yankee girl in a cowboy world in Nashville, Tennessee. Trying to get by, gonna survive. Every girl has a dream. Welcome to my world. I'm a Yankee girl. Hey guys, it's Michelle and today I'm standing outside of Walden's Puddle, a wildlife rehabilitation and education center here in Jolton, Tennessee. I've always known that if I wasn't in the entertainment business, I would definitely be doing something to help animals. Now this is the only rehabilitation center for wildlife that actually has professionally staffed people and recently they had a fire. It pretty much devastated them and they lost quite a few animals. So they definitely need help, so please visit waldenspuddle.org and there's other ways you can help out. I'm going to be speaking with Lane Brody, the CEO, and I'm sure she's going to tell us how we can help out this amazing organization. So stick around, we'll be right back. I am sitting with the CEO of Walden's Puddle, which is the Wildlife Rehabilitation and Education Center right here. Is this Jolton, Tennessee? Yes, but it is Davidson County, but oh. it's Jolton. Yeah. So Jolton, mm -hmm. Tennessee, right in Davidson County. Mm -hmm. And actually, Lane uh, is my neighbor, and the strangest thing happened. Yeah. I was watching TV, the news, and I saw her on the news, uh, and that she was the CEO of Walden's Puddle, and that they recently had a fire. So yes. not only did I want to help out because I love animals, I wanted to help out because she's my neighbor as well. So yeah, Lane, thank Love you for you coming. For and be, Pleasure. Well, Pleasure well, well, thank you for having me. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm thank here. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I stopped. Whatever it was when I was driving in, I, I don't know why I saw you with your dog, I guess, and I was just saying, I don't know how it ended up happening, but we spoke and... Here we are. So, yeah. so I'm so pleased. And I feel like everything, you know, happens for a reason. So Always. I definitely want to help. Please tell everybody out there exactly what Walden's Puddle is and what you guys do and how you help the wildlife. Well, Walden's Puddle is the only professionally staffed wildlife rehab and education center in Middle Tennessee. There are individual rehabilitators which are wonderful and we support them and we encourage a lot of other people to become rehabilitators. It's a wonderful thing to do. Uh, it's not extremely lucrative, but it's extremely rewarding. Um, but we are it. So that means that um, if an animal, say for example, a mother doe is killed by a car and her little fawn is next to her laying there oh. alive, without us that fawn would, would be put down. And oh. if the mother was injured and, and had to be put down as a result of it, the, the baby would be put down too. It is illegal to have oh. a uh, injured or an orphan animal or even a healthy animal in Tennessee. Um, you, you're not supposed to have them or care for them. And rehabilitators have to be properly permitted, which we are under TWRA law, USDA and uh, United States um, Wildlife uh, Services. And so we, um, we are very compliant to the regulations. We, we admit about 3,500 injured and orphaned animals a year of about 120 different species. Wow. And those are animals that uh, you are finding. We are and Lindsay, what are you bringing to Walden's Puddle today? The baby squirrel. Can we see the baby squirrel? Yes. We don't want him to jump out. Oh my God. Where'd you find him? He fell out of the nest yesterday. Oh my God, he really is a baby. Yeah. His eyes aren't even open. Well, that's so sweet of you to care so much about the wildlife that you're taking them in the Walden's puddle. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And you guys strictly run on donations from the community That's and right. from the public. You have no assistance from state or federal That's exactly government. exactly right. Yeah, oh, wow. which means that we really count on you to give us that regular support to make sure that we're here when you do find that little animal or your grandchild or whoever it is that finds it. And it's really one of those things that until you actually are in that the the nervousness of the moment of having, you know, an animal and what do I do with this animal, knowing that we're here is 
the greatest thing in a person's heart when they find an animal because it's like, oh, I have relief. I can right. take the animal somewhere. I know it's going to get the care that it deserves and needs to have. I'll feel better about that. So we're the good, we're the feel good people. <laughs> and can feel good about giving to us. <laughs> and, and I can attest because when I first moved to Nashville, I went to my mailbox and I heard, twee, twee, twee. I looked oh. down, there was a baby bird. Oh. I took care of it for as long as I could for about two weeks, and I just was beside myself. I'm an animal lover, so I did start researching, and that's the first I heard of Walden's Puddle. So about 12 years ago, I did bring a bird here. I'm thinking, let's see, Vicki Carter started the organization in 1989, and then uh, was incorporated in uh, early 90s, okay. is what I'm thinking, and the uh, Phillips Family Foundation donated this property and the building. And so, and we've been here ever since. And this will always stay in the corporation as probably the pre-release area, even if we're so fortunate to have another facility that would pay, be like critical care right. um, elsewhere. But this is the area where we're really building up all the pre-release enclosures all up in the hill and everything where the animals are really getting used to being wild before they get released back. So pre-release means they're almost ready to get... Yes, yes. So sometimes they'll come in the building, they'll get their critical care downstairs, then they're starting to get stronger. If it's a baby bird, then they go out into the, the pre-release, which is for them to fly and eat and hunt, and we watch them and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Or the baby squirrels, all of a sudden they're starting to wild up and they don't want to be around you anymore. You know, when they're young and you have to feed them by hand, it's different. Then they start to wild up. Same with the baby raccoons. We want them to hiss at us. We want them not to want us to, to be get used to people. Absolutely, because we don't want them going in you know you you can't you can't trust that they would go to a person's house and beg or whatever be you know human you don't want them to be too uh, social with humans you Absolutely. know you want them to be afraid and do what they're supposed to do we have uh, started the fire recovery fund it's the Walden's puddle fire recovery fund and it's very very crucial to us right now as you have seen when when you see this footage this is not what we normally look like um, and so it's going to disarray, look we're in total bit. disarray um, the smoke damage was severe um, it wasn't really um, you know damage to the physical building by the grace of God I had just installed you'll see these smoke detectors in every room and they're wireless. I had done that yeah. on my watch. Yeah. How long have you been the CEO? Four, year, four years. Four years. I stepped in How and did turned you get it around. Into it? Um, well, I when I was in um, Hollywood and even Chicago, I always worked with wild animals. I, oh, two okay. things in my life: recording artists and <laughs> wild animals. Yeah. Animals. And um, everywhere that I've worked in my career, <laughs> I've made sure that I knew where to go with these animals that I found, whether it be domestic oh. or wild. And I've rescued many, many domestic animals where I've actually worked with them and gotten them placed or sent over state lines and vetted them and hundreds and hundreds of animals when I came to Nashville. Much worse in the south than up north. So four years ago you took over and mm -hmm. that's amazing that no matter where you went in your career you always found where the animal yes. rescue places were and yeah. out. Yes, oh. you know, we're, we're called in our lives for different purposes and different things and uh, I have a strong affinity to creation. I'm even vegan so I'm pretty one of those extremists, yeah. But uh, when I was in Hollywood I worked with Martine Colette at um, Wildlife Way Station with the big cats and the exotic animals and that was uh, quite an amazing learning experience. And then when I came here, I found Vicki Carter, who at that time had her, um, it was very small before mm -hmm. it's what it is now. Um, she was a backyard rehabilitator, so, so to speak. And I found her in uh, Berry Hill. So I would take the animals that I found to her and I supported them financially. Then I started oh. doing concerts with all my friends and had lots of friends do concerts amazing for five money. years. Yeah. Um, everybody, Good Vince idea. always does. My husband's Eddie Bears, you know, the, uh, one of the top session players in town, and he would um, play with the players, you know, behind all of us. And and I just hand a check over to Walden's Puddle. Aww. Yeah. And then they asked me to be on the board, and I was on the board, and that was um, a very interesting experience. And I realized. Um, that there's a lot of people that talk and they don't do anything, and that's not who I am. Right. So I said, you know what? I could be out touring and doing what I do, and I'm still recording and doing all that, but I, I said, I have to do it. Right. So I, I, I stepped into another phase of my life, which um, went hand in hand with a lot of the ethics and the morals and the integrity that I also expressed in my recording career, which is why I'm not a superstar. I had many times, many opportunities to become a superstar in many ways. I could tell you the dates and the people I sat with, but it was one of those things where they say you sell your soul to the to the devil, and I wasn't going to do it, so I was penalized. So I went to to doing uh, a lot of USO tours, working for the animals, doing good works, and saying it's not going to be about me. I'm going to use this gift 
which has always been touted with the best, mm -hmm. um, for the good of all. So I stepped in. And, but don't you, you think know. that's where the truest happiness comes mm -hmm. from, is mm -hmm. when you do stuff for other people? I think so. I think that you haven't lived until you, until you serve. Right. You give it. Every day. It's a Are you Christian? Of course. Okay. I'm an Orthodox Christian. That's the ancient what, what's church. It, what's Orthodox? Way back. Oh. Way back to the beginning. The, the early, early Christian church, Orthodoxy. Oh. And in times of, of disaster mm -hmm. and, and heartbreak, like mm -hmm. recently happened at Walden's Puddle, yes. how do you feel that um, you know God has stepped in and, and really helped out? Is it is it by all the donations? Is it are you doing okay? Do you, what do you need? I want people out there to know what Walden's Puddle needs right now. Um, well, it is the funds because we're funds. trying to build the new uh, laundry room out in the back, which okay. we had plans for anyway. And we also are doing an addition off of this side of the build, building, so we need funds, additional funds for that. Um, wish list items and volunteers. We need lots of volunteers in all areas. And that was my next question. As far as volunteering for the animals, did the, the volunteers have to be trained? I would yes. assume. Yes. Okay. Yes. Where where can they get the training? Like, here. Oh, right here. <laughs> right here. Yeah. yeah. So you can go online to www.waldenspuddle.org, okay. fill out an application, send it in, and then we make an appointment with you. And then you kind of get a walk through, and we show you around, and and then you go through a little training period, and you sort of tell us what's your interest. I'm interested in animals, or I'm interested in working with you on social media or events, or we need people in all areas. So oh, okay. And, and so special. I have to tell you something very important, yes. and this is very important to you as viewers. When we're giving our money to a nonprofit, the most important thing to do is research that nonprofit and see what their percentages are in terms of what's going to the actual mission. This organization can now boast that 92% plus of all incoming funds go right to the mission, right to the animals. And that's because I do my job for free. I'm an in kind wow. CEO. And I structured, uh, by the grace of God, the board to be a working board, so everybody has a job. So, so Ralph Gervasio, he's maintenance director, and Carolyn Pendarvis is education department director. We do programs all over the, the, the uh, ten Nashville area, and we'll talk a little bit more yeah, about that. Education. Uh, everybody has a position that they fill. So it is a working board, which allows the organization to put the focus of the money on the animals, on the animal care staff, and then when we get to the point where we're more comfortable, we'll bring in some administration. Oh, there's a team of five of us on the executive committee. So I don't make any important decisions regarding money without consulting the other four. And we vote on everything. So that's wow. five business brains. These are very, very intelligent and successful business people. I'm always leery of donating because you hear these horror stories where the money gets taken or goes somewhere like else. Like the Donald Dethridges that of, of the world, and those things do go on sometimes. Yes. But, but so the majority are good. good you it's know? good to yeah. know that you can research it, you mm -hmm. can track yes. the dollars and make you sure it's going. you know how you do that? Excuse no. me, I'm not to interrupt you. No. <laughs> the Greek go, girl. Me. Tell them. <laughs> uh, it's givingmatters.com and GuideStar. You can see all the information on there. We're registered with Giving Matters, and you can see all. They ask us questions, and you can see the, the financials. Everything is there. We're very transparent, okay. and that's, that's another know. important thing for a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kelly. What are you bringing into Walden's Puddle? Uh, we tennis? are bringing in a possum that uh, someone in Donaldson found last night, and she wasn't able to bring it over, so I'm I'm being the caretaker. Oh, <laughs> how nice of you! And, and uh, Diane that. did an awesome job by uh, getting this little critter into a cage and keeping it safe in the storm. And, and it's a possum. Smile oh. pretty. Oh, oh, there she is. You Hello. Look at her. Hi. She knows she's on TV. Oh, good luck to you, little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I see anything that is has to do with animals and it's sad or bad, I get so distraught. I can't even conduct myself. So <laughs> as a CEO who <laughs> loves animals probably even more than I do, how do you deal with something like when when you find animal abuse or the the fire, for instance? How do you bounce back? I mean, what? Well, I I yeah uh, I can I can, I can just speak from my heart who I am as a as a spiritual entity. Um, I live I personally it's not to sound too over the top, but I personally don't live here as much as I live for what I see is ahead of us when we wow. leave here that's that that's powerful. how i am yeah really? that, that's who i am and, uh, it's not about what is accomplished here it's about what's accomplished in here and what happens inside is a strength that by the grace of god you receive when you do serve and you choose the greater and the greater for me is the virtues the greater uh, you know humility patience long suffering 
um, all of the things that matter, the compassion and responding to compassion and responding to the need, no matter what it is, human and animal. I work with a lot of Vietnam veterans. That's another thing that God has blessed me with through my work with the USO and the government, very well known for thanks for what you did on Slang Heroes, you know, the songs I wrote by the grace of God. I, I, I heard yeah. that on your website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I just, um, I just continue to live that way and to serve and then the strength comes he provides and that's what where this change is supposed to be within ourselves too. but i know that god has every single one in his care he created he's the author of every individual life so who am i i just serve and i trust him and if he chooses to take one back whether it's our son or it's a, an animal they're they're with him they're all with him so i know that i'm being found doing the right thing i pray i've done the right thing to do your will and not mine and trust you in everything Oh so my gosh. I don't question any. I don't ha have that. I, I just say, I, and I don't even take responsibility for the end result. I serve, and it's him. He he he, he takes care control. of that. And when I was driving in on at two three in the morning, and I knew animals were dying because we had heard there was smoke, I said my prayer, and I said, "You have a you have a purpose and a will to this, and I trust you, and I'll just keep serving no matter what it is." And then I remembered that I had put the smoke detectors in. That he told me to do that. And the whole building, the, the chief said, didn't go up because of that. And the animals, the majority, were saved because of that. And so and I just trust no and faith. And we're still here, and more people know about us now, thank God. So the mission is getting out there more. So he has a reason. And I don't overanalyze any of it, good, bad, or whatever. Just royal path, as we call it. You stay. Wow, you know? those are some words of wisdom. <laughs> First of all, she brought tears to my eyes. I almost started <laughs> crying in the middle. I could write all those days. ethics and, and morals. And I thought, if you, as long as you work hard and you keep your nose clean, so to speak, you're going to be successful and, and have the American dream. But that's not the case. There, there's, there's a give and take there. And sometimes that, that what they want is too great for you to give. I get so, it. so I succeeded without, you know, having to do all that, but did not become that household name, that superstar celebrity. But when you look up Lane Brody, you see me. You but know. you're becoming a household yeah. name in the house of God. Yeah, the house <laughs> that's of God. the important house. <laughs> we'll be right back with Lane Brody. We're going to take a small break, and we'll come back with Lane and Walden's puddle. Linda, what do you bring into Walden's puddle today? A toad. A toad? Yes. You found, what's wrong with the toad? Uh, my dog attacked it. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> so he's probably got a collapsed lung so he's filling up with air under his skin and I think they might be able to help him. Really? Uh -huh. Okay, can we see the toad, Linda? Sure. We don't have to pick it Oops. up. We'll just go down. Oh. Oh. See, he's filling up with air. Yeah, and your dog got him? Oh. Yes, my dog tried to eat him. Oh, and so what do you think they're going to do? Did they say? Uh. Don't know. Generally, what they do for a collapsed lung probably is just puncture your skin and let that air out. Oh, okay. And then maybe put like a little drain tube in to. So uh, you might be able to save them. Might be able to, yeah. Oh, we hope you get saved, little guy. <laughs> We're back with Lane Brody, the CEO of Walden's Puddle here. In kind in CEO. You mean free. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in kind? Is that yes, what that yes, means? Yes. Oh. Well, the free CEO. She works for free, everybody out there. So it's a great cause. And I want to know what the goals are. For Lane Brody and for Walden's Puddle. So I want to see more um, support in the community and more community pride for who we are. And we're little by little becoming very beloved in the community. It's what does somebody do if they if they find a baby squirrel? Like today, somebody brought a baby squirrel right. and we showed that. Mm -hmm. If somebody finds a baby bird, what? I always heard that if you touch them, then the mother doesn't want to not have anything to do with them. Is that a Old Wives Tale, okay. and uh, and those are the kind of things that we educate about. So um, before we talk about a specific species and what you know what to do, which is something that we um, have brochures about, what to do if you find an injured or orphan animal, very important because you don't want to abduct an animal or kidnap them. Nobody wants to do that, but unfortunately, <laughs> many people don't think of that first. <laughs> That's the first question you have to ask yourself. Well, what do you am mean by I, kidnapping? Am I kidnapping this animal? Oh, from the <laughs> am mother. Am I abducting this animal <laughs> from the parent? Okay. So that requires education. Okay. So um, that's one of the things we really want to improve on is education in our community, just like we're educating people to spay and neuter, you know, for domestic animals. Our education program is set up to educate our public and our community on what to do if they find an injured or orphaned animal and different native Tennessee species, wild animals, of which there are many, many in Middle Tennessee. Um, we, we do programs at uh, community centers, churches, libraries, schools, 
We do about 80 some programs a year. We really are, one of our goals in the future is to really grow our education program. We'd like many more people to become involved in that. People that might want to get used to, you know, holding uh, one of our ambassadors. Our education ambassadors are the animals that have an, an issue, say, say they broke a, um, a, a wing and it wasn't the kind of, of break that is devastating, but they can't fly again oh. properly, and they still have use of that wing. They can, in other words, they can pull it up. It's not just hanging down, and they look really beautiful, but they can't do what they normally do. They would not survive in the wild. We take those animals. We don't euthanize the animals um, that can go into education programs here or um, all over the country. We send them all over the country, which is um, a big part of what we do. And those animals are animal ambassadors, and they have to want to do the program. So we have to see, are they, is their personality suited to be around children or whatever? And, right. um, and once we discern that, they go out on these programs. Well, and Carolyn's a wonderful educator, and, but she needs help. We need to grow that. And that will help bring in more grant funds to us, which is very important. If we can grow that program, then we'll see more funding. Why, why can't you guys uh, get state funded or, or, or funds from the federal government? Why? I mean, Good question. They're just not there, and don't, there's nothing to indicate that there will be anything there. And we might be, be able to receive a little something if we work more on the gray water system here, the gray water remediation. We're trying to do things that are environmentally better, more sound, conservation more sound. We may be receiving something for that, but it's not that significant. Not, what it costs us to operate is about thirty thousand dollars a month here. If you look at our budget, a month. Yeah, yeah, and that's without me being paid and without all the other positions being paid. So you can imagine what really the full cost would be if we were putting all that money into administration. Now this is what matters most: the care of the animals and the people that are giving the animals the care. And now we've got top-notch people, and they're getting right. paid what they deserve to get paid. And then we start looking out, adding. You know, right? Oh, our programs are free. You don't, we, oh, we cannot, wow. we cannot um, charge by law, so we just ask oh, for donations, oh, oh, which was <laughs> items, donations, um, if you've enjoyed them, and uh, that helps us to be able to pay for the gas and get there and feed the animals and keep them in their mews out there in their enclosures that you'll see them in. So is there, a, is it, obviously there's a phone number, do you yes. prefer that they call if they find an animal, uh, email, text, what's, what um, Now the finding the animal part, but if you find an injured or orphan animal, you call 299-9938 and you leave a message. We are not at the point where we have people that can actually man those phones and take those calls right away, but we do return the calls quite quickly. Um, when you when you talk to one of our people at the front, they will discuss with you what's going on with that animal. As you mentioned about a baby bird, there's old, many old wives' tales. You can touch all baby animals. The mother's not going to be upset at all. You can put them back in the nest if it's been disrupted. You know, say a bunny nest or whatever, mm. put them all back down. Uh, if it's a baby bird that fell out of the nest and you can see the nest and you can get up there and put them back in, no problem whatsoever. So we work with you to help you to understand is that animal in trouble or not. Say in the case of a fawn and this is a big one fawn are often abducted so somebody will say there's been a baby fawn in my yard I've seen it under the bushes and it's you know it's just laying there and da, 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 they, da. the mother leaves them there doesn't she yes, she goes she and does. finds food I found that out <laughs> and people do think that she <laughs> yes. left them for yes and the same with baby bunnies the bunny bun, mother bunnies come and I'd have to double check with the girls on this mm -hmm. one our staff but I think it's twice a day so sometimes if you think a, a baby bunny nest is abandoned all you have to do is pick up that little baby bunny and look at that belly and you can see the the, the milk line you, their skin is so thin you can see the little milk line right there and you can just see it and move and go and then you know then you know mama's, the baby's still mama's there yeah you know, if best How? is to keep them with the mother right. and the father they do a far greater job than we do <laughs> Well, Lane, you have been amazing. Thank you. Not only uh, all your work with the animals, but um, I, I looked up some of your, your music. artist yeah. stuff and yeah. your music yeah. stuff. Yeah, so congratulations on being a, a big help to the community, but our animals, I mean, without our wildlife, I mean, it, it, they're just oh. as important as our, our yeah. normal pets, you know, yeah. our everyday pets. Yeah. They, have a, they have a right to be here just like us, and they make a, a they total make the difference world. in the ecosystem. Yeah everything it was created for a certain the balance is there for a reason and i think that if i may say something kind of in closing is that i think it's a reflection of who we are as a people how we treat the least i think my feeling about walden's puddle and 
uh, what it means to us. It's like a saving grace. That's what it means to me and what I would hope it would mean to our community. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful saving grace. It's something in the midst of our busy daily lives that is that matters. The needs of these animals when they're in trouble and that we see that we do the right thing and we stop and take that moment and know that there's a place such as Walden's Puddle to bring them. Where it's, a, it's very close to my heart to serve our military and to do USO tours and special memorials or whatever. So I had just done that and then recently um, we got a call from someone in Clarksville, a family that had rescued a eagle. One of the members of the Screaming Eagle, which I am a, 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 a honorary member, which is a wonderful thing and feel very privileged to have that. And so they brought the eagle in. She was in pretty bad shape and to watch her accept our care like she did. She let us hand feed her and work with her. She was very exhausted. She had several issues. She had to go to our veterinarian that gives free services to us to be cared for and then was brought back to us to, um, to convalesce. It took several months and then she was put into the flight barn. Well, when it came to releasing her, Oftentimes we release species back, we release species back to the wild and uh, right to where they came from. So they're not just being released back in the wild, but they're being released to the same spot where they came from, such as the case of turtles. They have to go right back on the same property that they came from because they only know about an acre of land their whole lives. And many species of birds have mates. So we took the eagle back and the family gathered and we had a bunch of people that came with us because it was very exciting. It was very exciting to have an eagle here on, our, on the premises and watch her accept her care. Those beautiful eyes and so regal. So when she was released, it was like she had actually called her mate and told him that she was coming. And she was let out of her crate and flew up and her mate was there waiting. Mm. And that's something that is mystical and beyond our comprehension that that um, bird would know and we've seen it happen before we've seen it with owls where their mate will be right there waiting where the neighbor will say we never saw a mate we didn't even know and that day when they're released the mate is there so it's a mystical thing and it's a wonderful journey to go through this with individual animals and um, the multitude of animals of middle tennessee that we care for yearly and we thank you so much for your support and for all the support you've given us through this fire stay with us and um, god bless well, hey guys, thank you for joining us on our story of Walden's Puddle. A wildlife rehabilitation education center that needs your help, your nonprofit organization, visit waldenspuddle.org. Maybe you can find some way in your heart to help out, whether it's volunteering or just donating some stuff on their wish list. But thank you again for joining us, and remember, our wildlife is important too.